Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. I am here joined by Mr. Mick Tsai, the founding partner of Contentos. Welcome, sir. Thank you. So, kicking off the interview, could you give a brief introduction of what Contentos do? Yeah, uh, we are Contentos. I am a co-founder of Contentos, and uh, we're trying to leverage the blockchain technology to reinvent the global content creation business and uh, allowing a global content creator for the first time they can truly control uh, the way they can produce the content, distribute the content, monetize the content, and also allow the whole ecosystem, they can get the true value from their content, as well as those people who are really want to make the possible contribution to this ecosystem. Now, when it comes to content, you know, blockchain-based content management platforms, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot, a lot of out there. I've mm -hmm. met a lot, I've talked to a lot, I've, you know, wrote, I've read articles of a lot, but I want, what I wanted to ask you was that what was original? about Contentos, what is your originality? What's the sharp weapon you have that you can pierce through all these competitors mm -hmm. out there? Okay, I, I think that's a very good question. If you want to build something on top of content, you got to have the creators. So um, that's the very first barrier that we have because uh, in the past the few years, we already have a, like one million content creators work with us. Mm -hmm. And when we work with us, when they work with us, we have three major content apps out there already. One is a Live Me, that's a mobile live streaming app. And the second is uh, Photogrid, that's a photo editing app. And the third one is Cheese, that's a short video app. So those content creators using, by using all these apps, they can build the content, really original content, uh, and helping their fans to enjoy their content directly. And these three apps today already cover more than 60 million monthly active users worldwide. Mm -hmm. So that's also give us the most powerful weapon because we already have massive users out there. So this also give us a chance when we're trying to build the true value about this token, mm -hmm. it can be uh, used by a lot of people. Now, like you mentioned, uh, apps embedded with uh, COS token ecosystem is currently live. Like you mentioned, live me, uh, cheese, as well as Photogrid. Now, how are they performing so far? Okay. Uh, actually, if you download today, you can see how it works right now. Uh, take cheese as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of uh, experimental things when we're working on with, with this product. We allow user when you publish the content, you can receive a certain amount of uh, COS incentive. And in the meantime, we also build a product feature allowing you to consume or spend your token because we, we want to educate user this is uh, something that is meaningful to you. You are not just move to crypto exchange and sell it. You are actually can exchange some good product feature design into this app, which is good because we can see about 15% rise in terms of like the daily active user because mm -hmm. user want to get these tokens and uh, buy certain feature inside the product. So that's something we observe. It's create a positive um, feedback inside the app. Now, let's get to the specifics. Now, I'm curious to ask you, uh, if I decide to take part in any of the platforms supported by COS token, how much would I get compensated for my content? Today, because COS has not listed any crypto exchange, mm -hmm. we will not calculate in any you know, yeah, one dollar no. No, uh, no, not work like that. Uh, but we also intend not to work like that at this moment. We try, because you know, if you was just give your token to uh, ordinary people like content creator, they have zero understanding about crypto. So mm -hmm. uh, if the crypto price go up and down, the chances they probably will just abandon because they still believe like fiat currency. So, but now we're trying to educate user is more like gamification way. We we'll just tell you say this is something you earn just like other game. It's like a game point. Mm -hmm. So it's the most uh, direct way that ordinary people can digest. And once you acquire this point, uh, token, then you will be able to move to the other uh, app and also consume over there. So let's say if I'm a photo uh, editing user inside the photo grid, I can build photos and earn tokens. But next day, if I'm trying to play cheese um, to buy certain feature, I can easily move those tokens to cheese and start purchasing those uh, features. So this gives a user idea, okay, this token actually means something, it has some kind of value, but in the meantime, they are not really just spec, market spec, speculator trying to just buy and sell this, mm -hmm. which can create a healthy uh, supply and demand circulation. Now, the Contentus platform has successfully achieved uh, uh, acquiring users, uh, the acquisition of mm -hmm. users. Now, I would like to ask you, what tactics have you taken into account to reach such uh, adoption as well as the spread of or the uh, well the spread of words uh, when it comes to 
people downloading or using users uh, downloading or using the platform that you provide. Okay. I think uh, because just like I mentioned, uh, all the three apps now already cover 60 million monthly active user. Uh, our challenge uh, is how we're going to educate those people. 99% they are not really crypto user. They have zero understanding about you know creating a dress or uh, do the wallet transaction. Mm -hmm. So we use gamification way to educate users. Uh, we design like like I said, the product feature. In the meantime, we also build a lot of uh, our original content. Like we work with Taiwan Yahoo team to build a live quiz show, allowing user to participate in this live quiz show. If you answer a question, uh, blockchain real question right, you got a chance to earn some token. But in case you fail doing a meetup again, you can use the token to revive yourself. Mm -hmm. So all this way is the tactic we're trying to convert those large, potential massive user become the crypto aware user. So I, I think this will take a, a long time to do this. You, you need to persuade them, you need to let them understand this has value. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe, especially a current bearish market condition, that's something has to be done. Now, if you have that off the top of your head, uh, could you, what would be the example of the questions asked with, within the, uh, the events? Okay, some questions rather easy, easy. For example, like who is the inventor of Bitcoin? I think uh, a lot of news are um, some, <laughs> some but it's, it's not, it's like the uh, selection. We give a, like the three oh, options okay. to select. So sometimes we we'll just make the option look very obvious. For oh, like, okay. like the option one, uh, like George, Mickey Mouse. George Bush, Mickey Mouse. Right, yeah, like, right. So yeah, this one <laughs> usually easily choose someone you don't know. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> but some question, especially the last question, we intend to make it very tough. For mm. example, explain what's the POW. Then we will have something look very hard to choose. Mm -hmm. That question will help us to also help us to understand how many population in this area truly understand the crypto. So in Taiwan, we actually know in our potential audience, probably close to 10% has the ability to answer those questions. All of those questions. Right, oh, that right. so that's, that's pretty su surprised us. But of course, because we done this show like a 10 episode, the mm -hmm. first episode probably very bad, but in the very last episode, a lot of people, those, those people already start getting some knowledge about this. So they will be able to answer the question right. So, so how many is taking part of the uh, the education event then? I think the whole episode achieved uh, fifty million viewers. Fifty million, wow! Yeah, so that's pretty we, pretty large. We cover not just Taiwan audience, but all the Mandarin speaking uh, country out, outside. China. That airs every week or every other week? Every week, but it, the first season already closed. <laughs> so we are we are preparing the second season. Yeah, probably will raw in March. <laughs> so. Um, since I think the education plan, the direction to heading towards education seems very promising. Now, when it comes to the business aspect of Contest, expanding the business of Contentos, mm -hmm. what tactics are you planning for? Okay, I think uh, we learned a few things in, in back in this whole journey. Uh, we understand how we're going to uh, we can use that gamification with the user, uh, persuade user to join this ecosystem. But the problem is now we only have three content apps. We want to leverage the greater power, for example, like game, games. So recently, a lot of people are talking about like Dev game or uh, those uh, token enabling game, original centralized app, but with some kind of token economy design building. So we are thinking about why don't we just open platform, introduce more interesting game to our ecosystem that not just restrict to the COS or Contentos uh, product, but also, for example, like open to Ethereum community, welcome like CryptoKitty to join or open to Tron community, welcome any type of game built on top of Tron, uh, supply TRX to join. That's also the reason why last week we joined Nitron Summit uh, mm -hmm. to talk about this and if start inviting all the Tron developers to join this ecosystem. So we believe later we can give our user a more uh, reason why you sh should hold the token because it's not about selling and buying. It's about using the token to experience something interesting uh, inside this ecosystem. It's the experience that counts, right? Right, right. So, so this will help our massive user with an easier and a low barrier way to in, in, enter this world. And in the end of the day, they will start understanding, okay, this is kind of interesting thing they should learn. 
Now you're currently taking part in Chain Plus 2019, and it's the second day. So I want to ask you how's, it com how's the conference coming so far, and compared to other uh, conferences that you've attended, uh, how's the vibe of Korean uh, crypto industry? Okay, I, I think the the whole conference is really running really good, and uh, it, because you know this is not market condition is not good, mm -hmm. but I still feel the vibe in here and can see a lot of uh, strong believer and uh, a lot of experiment happening in many domains. And I, th I think, for example, like stablecoin, STO, everybody is uh, trying to, uh, under each country's legal uh, regulation framework, trying to figure out how we're going to balance between uh, the innovation and the original, you know, the, the country regulation things, mm -hmm. uh, which is good because especially in this uh, bearish market, everybody's focusing on doing real thing. Mm -hmm. and make sure everything is more regulated, and in the meantime, make sure the product makes sense, can really reach out to the general public, not just only focus on the crypto users. I think uh, moving forward, when uh, winter come, uh, when spring come back, <laughs> yes. it will definitely have a bigger, bigger um, potential power. You predict a uh, bullish market trend in the coming 2019? I'm not going to predict <laughs> that. But I think, I, think, I, I think just a matter of time because the, we have to have a faith for the technology. Personally, I have strong faith because I have 10 years uh, experience in developing software. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a chance to read all this white paper, uh, black, Bitcoin white paper back in 2014. I, I, I personally, I believe this is the right direction. And not to mention, uh, in some use case, it can really solve the problem that centralized economy or centralized service provider cannot solve. So that would be the, something we can truly create value to general public. I think one of the fields that fits to your example is the content market. Right, content creation <laughs> market. I, I think a lot of people are talking about trying to leverage blockchain to disrupt or to reinvest something. I, I think uh, we have to face the reality Probably in the next couple of years, we will not be able to really just uh, disrupt, uh, for example, like for me, disrupt YouTube or disrupt in Instagram, because it has its own value. Centralized mm -hmm. pl uh, platform has its own value. But we need to figure out what kind of business model they cannot fulfill to satisfy certain amount of people. But those people cannot be just crypto users. There has to be real user. For us, we already see some true use case happen and we are helping those creators, uh, certain type of creators to get their value. I, I think once we get there, it will become like the real, real big product. In raising awareness of the crypto industry as well as the blockchain technology, would you care to give your last comment to our Korean viewers to focus on blockchain or maybe take a look at the contentious platforms? Okay, I think uh, this year is a kind of uh, cold year for the crypto market. But I believe that's also a good year for everybody to look a project closely, especially those projects willing to build things, not just uh, for the hype. So I think for career market, we all know this is a very important market in the global wise. Uh, that's the reason why uh, we spend a lot of effort in this market. And I believe uh, when spring comes, we content will be the one who get back uh, as fast as we can. Thank you for the comment. That is all the question we have today. Thank you also for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Mick Tsai, the founding partner of Contentos. Thank you for watching.